अंग्रेजों ने बनाए हुए कानून में लिखा था 124 सी सरकार के खिलाफ की गई बात बीएनएस धारा एक जो इसकी जगह आई है भारत की संप्रभुता एकता और अखंडता को तोड़ने वालों पर इस धारा का उपयोग वहां सरकार शब्द प्रयोग है यहां देश है भारत शब्द प्रयोग है आईपीसी में आसन या प्रयोजन की बात नहीं की थी किस उद्देश्य से आप बोलते हैं किस उद्देश्य से करते हैं इसकी बात ही नहीं की करना ही काफी है हमने इसमें देशद्रोह की डेफिनेशन में आशय की बात करी है उसका उद्देश्य क्या है उसका आशय क्या है इसका महत्व है अगर उद्देश्य देशद्रोह का है तो इसको कठोर से कठोर दंड मिलना चाहिए इसरो इन कोलैबोरेशन विद द इंडियन एयर फोर्स सिलेक्टेड द क्रू फ्रॉम अ पूल ऑफ टैलेंटेड टेस्ट पायलट्स दीस पायलट्स अंडरवेंट अ बैटरी ऑफ क्लिनिकल एरोमेडिकल एंड साइकोलॉजिकल टेस्ट्स फाइनली The National Crew Selection Board recommended four test pilots from the Indian Air Force for the Gaganyaan Crew Training Program. The selected crew members were trained at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, Russia, for a period of about 13 months. This training covered various aspects of a space mission, such as parabolic flights. They will also be assigned for ISRO NASA mission to the International Space Station. announced by the honorable prime minister this incredible feat will take bharat to greater heights akasha bhavantam pratikshit hai hello everyone i am kanchan and welcome to aptipus academy for civil officers a premier institution for preparing for civil officers in india today i am here for a daily news and editorial analysis for 9th and 11th of march 2024 and this editorial analysis is going to be important for all three stages of upsc which are upsc prelims mains and interview process and apart from upsc exams this editorial analysis is going to be important for all the government exams in india so without further delay let us begin the analysis Recently Bharatiya Shaksya Adhinayam a criminal law in India was brought into effect by replacing the Indian Evidence Act and in this context this news becomes important for UPSC prelims perspective and also for the GS2 of UPSC mains and under GS2 this topic caters to the syllabus Indian judiciary government policies and interventions and in this topic we are going to discuss about the Bharatiya Shaksya Adhinayam then we'll discuss the three criminal laws that has been brought into effect in india recently then we'll discuss the pyq that has been asked from the similar topic so let us begin the analysis as far as the bharatiya shaksi adhinayam is concerned this new criminal law in india replaces the indian evidence act and it introduces the changes in provisions related to electronic evidence so even the electronic evidence has been made admissible by the court of law in india as per the bharatiya shaksi adhinayam and this bharatiya shaksi adhinayam is part of the three criminal laws in india which are bharatiya nyay sanhita which replaces the indian penal code so this is important point so bharatiya nyay sanhita which is bns replaces the indian penal code bharatiya nagarik suraksha sanhita replaces this crpc and bharatiya shaksi adhinayam uh, which is the which is the topic of discussion for today replaces the indian evidence act so these are the three criminal laws that has been brought into effect in india recently and these three criminal laws will be effective from july 1 2024 so there will be no indian penal code in india there will be no crpc in india and there will be no indian evidence act in india now there will be three criminal laws which which are bharatiya nyay sanhita bharatiya nagarik suraksha sanhita and the bharatiya shaksya adhinayam So these three laws will be the three new criminal laws in India, which will be effective from July one, twenty twenty-four. And these points are very important for the UPSC prelims perspective and various one-day examinations in India. Now let us discuss the major provisions that has been brought by the Bharatiya Shaksi Adhinayam twenty twenty-four. In this Bharatiya Shaksi Adhinayam 2023, various provisions from the Indian Evidence Acts has been retained, and also the various changes has been incorporated. And so far as the provisions retained from the Indian Evidence Acts are concerned, a proven fact and the police confessions has been retained as an admissible evidence in the Bharatiya Shaksi Adhinayam. And the proven fact is the fact which is considered by court as the true fact. That means if a court believes that a some fact is true and it is admissible in the court, that fact will be called the proven fact. 
and any confessions which are made by individuals to the police officers or in the police custody will be called the police confessions and uh, the police confessions has also been retained as the admissible evidence in the Bharatiya Saksya Adhinayam 2023. So these were the provisions which have been retained uh, from the Indian Evidence Act and so far as the key changes incorporated in BSA 2023 is concerned the definition of the documentary evidence has been changed and even the electronic records or the oral evidence which can be given electronically can be considered as the documentary evidence so this Bharatiya Saksi Adhinayam 2023 inculcates the electronic records as new type of evidence in the criminal law in India and the electronic evidence which are given orally or in any form will be considered the primary evidence in this new criminal law and this this criminal law has also been synchronized with the Information Technology Act of 2000 because the Information Technology Act of 2000 contains various technical terms such as semiconductor memory, communication device, etc. So this criminal law has been made in sync with the Information Technology Act of 2000. So these are the important provisions of the Bharati Saksi Adhinayam 2023. Now let us discuss the other two criminal laws which have been brought into effect in India. So as we just discussed, the three new criminal laws have been brought into effect in India and these three criminal laws basically aims to do away with the criminal laws which were enacted during the British period because most of the criminal laws in India, for instance, Indian Penal Code, the Indian Evidence Act, etc. They were all brought into effect during the colonial period. So the criminal laws hai Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Acts, etc. Wo sub laws British time in इसीलिए इन तीनों क्रिमिनल लॉज को रिप्लेस करने के लिए तीन नया क्रिमिनल लॉज लाया जा रहा है सो बेसिकली टू गेट ओवर द कॉलोनियल हैंगओवर इन इंडिया द थ्री न्यू क्रिमिनल लॉज आर बीइंग ब्रॉट इनटू इफेक्ट एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेकंड क्रिमिनल लॉ इन इंडिया व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द भारतीय न्याय संहिता 2023 एंड दिस भारतीय न्याय संहिता रिप्लेसेस द इंडियन पेनल कोड ऑफ 1860 सो so 1860s IPC is being replaced by this law. The IPC which was framed by the British is official criminal code of India that lists various crimes and punishments. So the IPC is basically the, the criminal law which is presently there in India and this criminal law contains the various crimes and the punishments in India. So the various provisions of the crimes and punishments are contained in the Indian Penal Code and this IPC is being replaced by the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita of 2023. And talking about the key takeaways of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita 2023, the sedition has been deleted from this provision. So this is very important. The sedition which is to go against the government or which is to say something against the government has been done away with this uh, new criminal law. But another provision which penalizes the secessionism, separatism, rebellion, acts against sovereignty, unity and integrity of India has been brought into effect. So, here sedition ko remove karke kuch naya provisions dala gaya hai. And so far as the second change that has been brought by the Bharatiya Nai Sanhita 2023 is concerned, this new criminal law provides for the death penalty for the gang rape of the minors and also for the mob lynching. In India, you have recently seen that there are many mob lynching cases gang rapes against the minors ka cases are raha. and in this criminal law the death penalty has been provided for these type of crimes against the minors and also for the mob lynching so these points are very important and talking about the third provisions community service has been introduced as one of the punishments for the first time so the community service has been included as one of the punishments in the criminal law and in community service punishments the criminals are made to provide the community service instead of the imprisonment so basically yahan pe criminals ko imprison so people who commits the petty crimes will be called for the community service and this community service punishment is only provided for the petty crimes and the crimes such as defamation so only for the petty crimes or the small or the minor crimes the community service punishments has been provided so ye jo community service punishments hai ye chote chote crimes ke liye hi provide kiya gaya hai in this criminal law so you have to remember this point that the defamation is one of the petty crime and for this community service as the punishment has been provided in this new criminal law. And talking about the second criminal law in India, 
And talking about the second criminal law in India, this is the Bharatya Nagarik Suraksha Sanita 2023. And this criminal law replaces the Code of Criminal Procedure of 1973. And so far as the CRPC is concerned, the CRPC lays down the procedure for investigation, arrest, court hearing, bail and punishments in the criminal cases. So you have to know the difference between the IPC and CRPC. IPC just lists the provisions of the crimes and the provisions for punishments in India. But the CRPC contains the procedure for the investigation, arrest, court hearing, etc. So IPC and CRPC में ये difference है कि IPC में crimes and punishment को list किया गया है, but CRPC में ये crimes को कैसे punish किया जाए, ये crimes को कैसे trial किया जाए, ये procedure दिया गया है. So आपको ये basic difference between the CRPC and IPC को याद रखना है. And talking about the key takeaways of भारतीय नागरिक सुरक्षा संहिता 2023. The law provides for the time-bound investigation and trial and judgment within the 30 days of the completion of the arguments. So the so the investigation, trial and the judgment should complete within the 30 days. And this law also provides for the video recording of the statement of the sexual assault victims to be made mandatory. So for the crimes related to the sexual assault, the video recording has been made the mandatory. And talking about the third provision of this criminal law, this law provides for the attachment of property and proceeds of crime. So the attachment of property and the proceeds of crime has also been provided in this new criminal law. So we discussed the three criminal laws in India and these criminal laws are very important for the exam perspective. Now let us look at the PYQ that has been asked from this topic. UPC in 2021 asked this question related to the criminal justice system and the reforms needed in the criminal justice system in India. And the question was, comprehensive reforms are needed in the criminal justice system to ensure the effective enforcement of law, uphold accountability, have a well-trained workforce and the speedy disposal of the cases. Comment. 250 words. So this question was asked in UPC 2021 and in this question basically the need for the criminal justice system or the reasons why the reforms in the criminal justice system are needed has been asked. So in this question you can first write the introduction. So in intro you can write about the criminal laws in India like CRPC, IPC, Indian Evidence Act you can write about them. Then in body Write, write the reasons why the reforms in criminal system in India are needed. For instance, new type of crimes are emerging. For instance, mob lynching, social media crimes, etc. New types of evidence are also coming. For instance, the electronic evidence, we talked about it. So electronic evidence has to be made the admissible in the court of law. You can also write the criminal laws which are there in India were made during the British period. So the colonial hangover is there. So you can write about these points. And you can also write about the rising pending cases in Supreme Court of India and High Courts rising cases of pending cases. So there are a huge number of pending cases in Supreme Court and High Court. So you can write these reasons as the need for the criminal justice reform in India. And in the second para, you can write the way ahead. So in the way ahead, you can write how the criminal uh, justice system should be improved in India, India. And lastly, you can conclude by writing the recent changes that has been brought in the criminal justice system in India. So this is how you can approach this question in the UPSC. Now let us move into another topic of discussion for today. Before I move into another topic of discussion for today, I have an important announcement for you. Those who are appearing for UPC prelims 2024, Nisei All India Test Series program of Aptiplus Academy for Social Services is must attempt for all because this test series contains the 4900 high quality questions curated by the experts from Aptiplus Academy for Civil Services. And apart from this, recorded discussions on these high quality questions are also available. And most important feature of this test series is that the money will be refunded to the students if the students finds this test to be unsatisfactory. So this is a golden opportunity for you all and you can register yourself for this test by scanning the QR code given here. And you can also get the details of this test in the link given in the description section. And hurry up and register for this test now. And with that announcement, now let us move into another topic of discussion for today.
Recently, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi revealed the name of four astronauts during his visit to the Vikramaditya Space Resource Center in Sri Harikota. And in this context, this news becomes important for UPC presence perspective and also for the GSP people 3. And under GS paper 3, this topic caters to the syllabus space technology. In this, so in this topic, we are going to discuss about the three major space infrastructure projects of ISRO, which were recently unveiled by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And then we'll discuss about the Gangayan mission in detail. Now let us know the names of the four astronauts which are being sent by government of India to space. So these are the uh, four names of this astronauts which are being sent by government of India or the Prime Minister Narendra Modi who are the group captain Prasanth Balakrishnan Nair, group captain Ajit Krishan, group captain Angad Pratap and the wing commander uh, Subhan Susukla. So these are the four astronauts which are being sent uh, in the Gangayan mission. So these names are important for various one day exams in India and various competitive exams but these names are not quite important for the UPC prelims perspective. So these were the names of the four astronauts which were unveiled by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So now let us discuss about the other infrastructure projects which were unveiled recently by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So apart from unveiling the names of the four astronauts, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also inaugurated three infrastructure projects. The first one is PSLV integration facility which is PAF and this boosts the frequency of the PSLV launch which, which are the polar satellite launch vehicles uh, from 6 to 15 per year. So with this integration facility of the ISRO, the PSLV satellite launch uh, would be increased from 6 to 15. So, so this is a very important initiative and uh, this facility also caters to launches of small satellite launch vehicles which are SSLB and other small launch vehicles designed by the private space companies. So the small satellite launch vehicles would also be supported by this PSLB integration facility. And as an aspirant, you must know the difference between the PSLB and SSLB. The PSLB is the four stage launch vehicle used for launching satellites in geosynchronous and geostationary orbits. But the SSLB is the three stage launch vehicle and SSLB is used for launching satellites in low earth orbit at low cost. So basically the PSLB is the four stage vehicle and the SSLB is the three stage launch vehicles and the PSLB is used for launching the satellites in geosynchronous and the geostationary orbits and the SSLB is used for launching the satellites in the low earth orbit. So you must know about these difference between the PSLB and SSLB and the second facility that was inaugurated by PM Modi is the semi cryogenic integrated engine and stage test facility. So this facility is aimed to enable the development of semi cryogenic engines and the stages which will increase the payload capability of present launch vehicles. So to develop the semi cryogenic engines and the stages this uh, semi cryogenic integrated engine and test facility has been inaugurated and this facility is equipped with the oxygen and kerosene supply system to test the engines up to 200 tons of the thrust. So the payload capacity of the launch vehicles would be increased because the cryogenic engines are lighter in weight. So for this reason this test facility is important for India and the third infrastructure project which was announced by the uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was the Trisonic Wind Tunnel at Vikramaditya Space Resource Center. So the wind tunnel has been inaugurated in the uh, Vikramaditya Space Resource Center and this wind tunnel will facilitate the aerodynamic testing of the trisonic vehicles. So the flight test before the launch would be done in this trisonic wind tunnel facility. So these were the three infrastructure projects which was launched by PM Modi recently. Now let us discuss about the Gangayan mission in detail. Gangayan mission is the first human space flight mission of the ISRO and this mission aims to demonstrate the ISRO's human space flight capability. And this mission aims to launch the human crew into the Earth's orbits which is the 400 kilometers away and it also aims to bring them back to Earth. And uh, the launch vehicles which are being used in this Gangayan mission are the GSLB Mark III which is also known as the LMB3. So this is very important. And the astronauts selected in the Gangayan mission are being trained in Russia. And the spacecraft of the Gangayan mission consists of the three modules which are the orbital module, service module and the crew module. 
The orbital module orbits the Earth and the service module supports the crew module and the crew module provides the human friendly environment in space. So the crew module is the module where the astronauts would sit. And another important fact about the Gangayan mission is that the Biomitra which is a humanoid robot will perform the microgravity experiments and will also monitor the module parameters. So the microgravity experiments within the crew module will be done by this humanoid robot which is called the Biomitra and this Biomitra is also part of the uncrewed experimental Gangayan mission. So before the manned Gangayan mission an uncrewed mission will be sent to the space and the Biomitra will be part of this uncrewed space mission before the launch of Gangayan mission. So these were the important facts about the Gangayan mission. Now let us move into another topic of discussion for today. <clears throat> Recently the World Economic Forum's Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution Center has been established in Hyderabad and in this context this news becomes important for UPC prelims perspective and also for the GSP per 3 of UPC means and under GS3 this topic caters to the syllabus industrial growth and industrial revolution and in this topic we are going to discuss about the center for fourth industrial revolution and its aim then we'll discuss what is the fourth industrial revolution in detail So as we just discussed the World Economics Forum's Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution which is also called the C4IR was inaugurated during the Bio ACR 2024 summit which was held in Hyderabad. And so far as the aims of this fourth industrial revolution center is concerned, it aims to create 10,000 jobs opportunities in the health tech sector. And this center also aims to support the emerging companies and also aims to generate the novel ideas. And, and its focus areas includes the real world evidences, healthcare analytics and the informatics. And under this initiative, the initiatives like the cl clinical registry, the innovation sandbox and the data analytics labs are also underway and the center also aims to develop the industry ready talent through the scaling programs so the scaling programs will also be done in the health tech sector by this uh, center for fourth industrial revolution so these were the important aims of the center for fourth industrial revolution now let us understand what is the fourth industrial revolution So far as the Center for Fourth Industrial Revolution is concerned, this is an initiative of the World Economic Forum and this initiative aims to establish centers that focus on harnessing the potential of the Fourth Industrial Revolution technologies. And talking about the Fourth Industrial Revolution, the Fourth Industrial Revolution is also called the Digital Revolution and the Fourth Industrial Revolution is characterized by integration of technologies that are blend of physical, digital and biological realms. So all the physical, biological and digital realms would be integrated in this industrial revolution. And this fourth industrial revolution term was coined by the Klaus Schwab who was the founder and the executive chairman of World Economic Forum. And the fourth industrial revolution includes the technologies such as internet of things, robotics, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, 3D printing, etc. So all these technologies are included in the fourth industrial revolution and for this reason this fourth industrial revolution is also called the digital revolution. And this industrial revolution is very important because this brings about the advancements in technologies, boosts the productivity and efficiency and also boosts the economic growth and facilitate the good governance. So the fourth industrial revolution in India is very important because this technology will bring advancements, productivity, efficiency and economic growth will bring and the good governance will also facilitate. So for this reason, fourth industrial revolution is very important for India. And talking about the World Economic Forum, World Economic Forum is a non-governmental organization. So this is a very important point. UPC sometimes confuse the aspirants by writing various terms. Uh, for instance, the World Economic Forum is an intergovernmental organization or the non-governmental organization. So you have to know this is not an intergovernmental organization. This is a non-governmental organization and this was founded by the uh, Klaus Schwab. So Klaus Schwab founded this organization in 1971 and the headquarter of World Economic Forum is located in Geneva which is in Switzerland and this is an organization for the public-private collaboration. So this is an important point so you need to know about the World Economic Forum and the fourth industrial revolution. So these were the important facts about the fourth industrial revolution. Now let us move into another topic of discussion for today. 
Recently, the Mazuli masks of Assam and the crochet lace crafts of the Andhra Pradesh has been given the GI tag. And in this context, this news becomes important for UPSC prelims perspective and also for the GSP paper 3 of UPSC mains. And under GSP paper 3, this topic caters to this levels intellectual property rights, which are IPRs. And in this topic, we are going to discuss about the topic in detail. We'll discuss about the Mazuli masks, then we'll discuss the Mazuli manuscript paintings in detail. Then lastly, we'll discuss the PYQ that has been asked from the similar topic. So let us begin the analysis. The traditional crochet lace craft of the Andhra Pradesh has received the GI tag and this announcement of GI tag is important because the crochet lace craft of Andhra Pradesh is facing the competition from the machine made lace craft from China. So for this reason this crochet lace craft is important so you need to know about the crochet lace craft and where it belongs to. And similarly the Mazuli mask and the manuscript paintings of Assam was given the GI recognition and these GI tags basically aims to rejuvenate and promote the tra traditional craft and also ensure the continued legacy and the heritage preservation. So for this reason GI tags are important and talking about the geographical indication tag which are the GI tag, the department of the promotion of industry and internal trade which is DPIIT which falls under the ministry of commerce and industry registers the craft in the geographical indicators registry which is GIR which certifies that these products are confined to the particular region only. So basically the GI tag ensures that the particular product belongs to the particular region only. So these were the news in details. Now let us discuss about the Mazuli mask in detail. So Mazuli masks are basically the handmade masks which are traditionally used to depict the characters in Bhavanas. So Bhavanas are basically a traditional form of entertainment with religious messages. So Bhavanas are basically the religious messages and the entertainment which are done in Assam. And these Bhavanas traces its origin in the Vaishnavite tradition of the Sankara Deva. So the Sankara Deva who lived in Assam and India during the 15th and 16th century promoted the Mazuli masks and the Bhavanas. And the masks depict the gods, goddesses, demons, animals and the birds like Ravana, Garuda, Narsima, Hanuman, Varaha etc. And earlier these Mazuli masks were confined to the Sataras only. So Sataras are basically the monasteries in uh, Assam and in Sataras or the monasteries the Vavanas or the entertainments were done and these Mazuli masks were worn by the people in the Sataras and people nowadays are trying to move these Mazuli masks away from the Sataras. So these were the important facts that you need to know about the Mazuli masks and you can see the pictures of the Mazuli masks here and the different characters which are being portrayed in the Mazuli masks. So these were the important facts about the Mazuli masks. Now let us understand about the Mazuli manuscripts in detail. The Mazuli manuscript paintings are basically a form of religious arts which are closely linked with the Mazuli island. And so the Mazuli island as we all know is the largest river and island in India and this is located in Brahmaputra river and this Mazuli manuscript painting is patronized by the people in the Mazuli island. And this Mazuli manuscript painting traces its origin in the Sankara Deva itself and this art form's origin is also attributed to the Stimanta Sankara Dev and this art form depicts the characters of Bhagavad Pura in Assamese. So the characters of the Bhagavad Puran has been uh, attributed in this uh, Mazuli manuscript painting and the, and the Mazuli manuscript painting are inspired from the Pala school of painting arts. So this is very important point. So the Pala school of painting which flourished in Bengal region also influenced the Mazuli manuscript painting in Assam. So these were the important facts that you need to know about the Mazuli manuscript painting. Now let us discuss the PYQ that has been asked from the similar topic. UPSC in 2015 asked this question related to the GI tag in India and the question was which of the following has or have been accorded the GI indication status. Option 1 is Banaras, Brocades and Saris. Option 2 is Rajasthan, Dal, Bati, Churma. Option 3 is Tirupati Laddu. Select the correct answers using the given code below. So you need to know about the list of the items which have been included in the GI tag recently. So you also need to know which products are included in the GI tag status. So, so for this reason GI tag topic is important. So this type of question is asked in UPC and comment the answer of this question in the comment section. And this was also the last topic of discussion for today. And today as well I have come up with an important quote of the day for you. Now let us look at the quote that I have got for you.
So the quote of the day is very important for all the aspirants in India and the quote of the day is very simple and straightforward and the quote is quote unquote try and fail but never fail to try. And this quote is self-explanatory and very relevant for all of you. And the aspirants should always keep this quote in mind. And with that quote, I'm concluding today's session. We'll meet again in the next video. Till then, take care.